Welcome to the Startup Grind. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second Startup Grind event. Uh, Startup Grind is uh, a uh, global network of communities that try to support each other by having monthly uh, interviews with local entrepreneurs to, to learn from their experiences and hopefully gain inspiration for our own entrepreneurial endeavors. With us today is uh, Ahmed Hajia from Bezat, uh, the uh, owners of uh, the Digums brand, and in addition to other products, I'm uh, Haider Al Musawi, the co founder of uh, Sirdab Lab. Sirdab Lab is a startup hub that aims to support entrepreneurs in any stage of their business. So, if, you have a, if you're not sure what idea to pursue, or if you have an idea and you need to refine it, or you already have a business but it needs support in some way, uh, as a team, we support you. We have a network of mentors. And we encourage the community to come together and support one another. So uh, with that said, uh, Ahmed uh, Hajia, uh, first of all, can you tell us a bit about uh, Bezat, the company, and how it started? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, my name is Ahmed Hajia, and I'm uh, uh, co-founder of uh, Bezat and the deputy general manager and head of IT, you can call me. Uh, well, Bezat established in uh, Back in 2000, if I'm not mistaken, 2013, uh, uh, month of uh, May 2013. But uh, Bezat is a, uh, it's like a, another, it's like a second company where we came from. Uh, first of all, we established uh, Digums. Uh, our background came from Digums. If you heard about the Mishari uh, Sagira or the SMEs fund. Uh, we get funded uh, Digums from the SMEs, and then uh, Digums established in uh, 2010, maybe February was the launch of uh, Digums.com. And uh, from there until we sell out Digums and then we establish Bezat, where Bezat now acquire all the uh, other uh, products that Digums has which is now Digums Store and uh, Dayram.com, Crude.com and uh, the main uh, concept uh, of Bezat or the main establishment of Bezat is Tajar.com. Okay, uh, uh, can you explain briefly what Digums is and like each of the products? What is the business model? What kind of service does it provide? Okay, Digums, uh, first of all, Digums.com is like a, a company established uh, to be a, a gaming uh, company. And Digums.com is uh, like a product within Digums company. Digums.com is an e-commerce site, is a small e-commerce site that has an engine uh, to be able for the uh, customer or the user to rent a game upon a package. So for example, if you heard about Blockbuster, Yep. Blockbuster in the U.S., they, they uh, used to uh, rent a game or rent uh, movies. Yep. So it's the same concept uh, we acquired here in Kuwait and we get funded from the SMEs, yep. small uh, to medium enterprise uh, funding back then with the IFC. And, uh, okay. and then uh, after that, we uh, felt that Digums by itself is not sufficient uh, as one product. Uh, inside the company. So we established uh, Digums Store, which is the e-commerce site for selling, not rent. And then we established another uh, brand called Dayram.com. If you heard about Dayram, Dayram is a cosmetic site for women. And it's uh, e-commerce site specialized in makeups and uh, accessories for women. And then uh, we established uh, another company, another, uh, I mean, uh, product within Digums called Crude.com. Crude.com is uh, an e-commerce site even uh, that sell uh, redeem codes or redeem pins uh, like PlayStation cards 
uh, iTunes card for uh, Apple and uh, all other these redeem codes like now we are serving uh, Zane, Viva, all these uh, rechargeable uh, cards. And uh, from uh, there, uh, all these uh, items or all these uh, 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 products get transferred under Bezat. Okay. And uh, you see, uh, there's uh, Tajr. Tajr.com. Tajr.com yeah. is the main is the main uh, idea of Bezat. When we established Bezat back in 2013, we uh, set together. We are uh, brainstorming to have a payment gateway. So a payment gateway can consist of uh, three different type. One of them is a payment gateway for e-commerce site or a marketplace where people can have their products from a different uh, store in our store or to have a billing system which we acquired, which we call Tadger.com. So we go for the third option, which is a billing system that has payment gateway uh, linked with the SMS. So when you want to invoice uh, your customer, you send him an invoice through the SMS and uh, he can follow the link and get paid. And uh, that's how Tajar uh, gets established. Okay, nice. Uh, when you say uh, brainstorming, who are your co-founders? Okay, my co-founder, uh, Qais Deshti. Uh, me and Qais Deshti, uh, okay, Qais Deshti founded Digums.com in the beginning. And uh, he's the one behind the, let's say, operation, um, operation work and uh, uh, what do we call it, uh, paperwork that happens back in 2009 when he was uh, submitting the idea and the uh, paper to the uh, small to medium enterprises fund. And then he got the fund. After that, he came across building the platform of digums.com. So he started seeking for someone to help. So uh, he's not uh, technical? Uh, he's not person. technical. Okay. He came from a, a business background. Okay. So he uh, started searching for someone to help. And I was uh, on that day uh, working under him for a salary of 100 KD a month. Mm. And I was taking it as a challenge or uh, you can call it uh, filling my spare time okay. on that uh, time. And then we established the gums and I become like a partner on uh, 2010 after he found me uh, 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 like the, I like the uh, idea. I start, uh, uh, I start, I mean, يعني خلاص صرت أحب الشركة قمت أنا داوم أكثر منه في البدايات وstart building the product and communicating with developer and establishing the company. So he start offering me the uh, stake in the company. Yeah. So I buy 5% of a uh, company. I buy it from the uh, small uh, to medium enterprises. And it's never happened because uh, I think there are, uh, in, in the contract, it has to be one, which is the entrepreneur, and the other party is the company. But uh, we, we made it like this. Guys himself go and fight to get me in, in the board and uh, get me 5% as a stakeholder. Uh, uh, what was your experience before joining the Gums? Oh, my experience, okay, I, my, I came from a banking background. Okay. I graduated from Kuwait University as an MIS uh, back in 2005. I graduated as an MIS and then I joined MBK for a couple of years. And then after MBK, I worked there as a technical uh, uh, guy in the MIS department. So I learned a lot from MBK. And then I moved to Central Bank. After that, Central Bank, I spent four years of my life there. After that, I resigned. So I came from a banking uh, uh, background uh, before joining uh, Digums or as of now, 
before resigning from Central Bank and be uh, as a full-time employee in Bezat. Okay, uh, but uh, how did you develop your technical skills? Because uh, Qais brought you in as technical, uh, the technical guy. Yeah, so. uh, well, technical, okay. Uh, we have a good history here in the area. I mean, we came from uh, uh, everybody, maybe. We came from uh, technical people. We came from a background of uh, the IRC. If you remember, in 1996, 1997, we all jump into IRC and start chatting, start uh, communicating with each other, and then people start learning uh, uh, new languages like Linux. They start uh, learning Linux to start operate for uh, web hosting. I heard Bashar uh, Abdel Hadi came to, uh, he introduces himself. Yeah. Uh, one of your videos in the YouTube. Yeah. So I heard him. Yeah, I heard him that uh, he say we came from the IRC in the beginning. On that, uh, yeah, from the same yeah, I'm I'm from the same generation. So uh, everybody built his uh, technical or uh, technical background back then. Uh, Bashar took the web hosting and the server administrator. People going through hacking. Uh, there is the, some people left, which, we, which I belong to, is we go through learning. So I learned a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, stuff during my uh, uh, lifetime. Like I heard about web, de web designing, web development. I go and read, learn new uh, language like HTML back then. And then I heard about, okay, web uh, hosting. I go and learn Linux, some of the codes in Linux. Uh, from there, I build up my uh, background. But uh, all of uh, all of my technical background came from self. Uh, self yes, right. self uh, taught. So even after joining Digams, there was a lot to learn about building the website itself. Or were you comfortable with the web development? as soon as you joined Digums? No, when I joined Digums, I joined as a project manager. Okay. Uh, I stopped writing code in 2000, maybe 2007 or 2008. I stopped writing code. But when I joined uh, Digums, I joined as an IT, knowing came from a coding background uh, and dealing with the developer. So I know what they, uh, what their language. So when I speak, to them, I speak to them, and I know I can evaluate how much work should be done on that part, how much time should be done on that and the other part. So uh, from here, it was easy and uh, even kind of one and I with developer, I gave them the idea, and they execute the idea for me. Okay. So it's like a project manager and business analyst at the same time. I do documentation and do. Uh, I studied the uh, the the let's say the uh, technical part from the overall perspective and write it down with the screenshots. I do screenshots and all this. Uh, sometimes I start drawing. How do I need uh, the the system to be look like? And I submit it to the developer and become like a project manager handling the project during the development uh, stage. Okay, nice. As, uh, I'm interested in uh, how Qais came to acquire the, the fund from the SME, the original SME fund, because uh, Digums as a concept uh, to rent games, it's something hard, uh, for me it's like hard to convince investors to give you money. So how did he uh, like pitch the idea? Yeah, as I understand from him, uh, back then on, on, on uh, when he applied for this uh, SME's fund, uh, uh, there was like a, uh, a key money you have to pay. A key money was 3,500 uh, dinar for the uh, visibility study they will do. So it's like he paid it without even think uh, he will get this money back or not. So he paid it to do the visibility study. They done the visibility study and found it a very visible uh, concept here in Kuwait to start uh, the game rental uh, site. Okay.
And that's how he uh, acquired the money. Okay. And uh, the acquisition of uh, Digums by Tawseed, uh, how did it come about? Did they hear about you? Okay, that's, uh, okay. there is a, a funny story about this. Uh, one day, me and Qais sitting in the office and discussing, I don't know what was, maybe rubu dinar, nus dinar, naqsa here and there. So we are discussing where can we find this missing money. And then somebody came in, like a virus. He came in, he asked our employee, where, where is, the, where is uh, the general manager? He even don't know the name of the people inside. Yeah. So he said, uh, behind me. So he grabbed a chair, he put the chair in the front of our table, and he said, he say, we are here to buy the gums. Um, uh, me and Qais was discussing that. What? <laughs> buy the gums? We never thought of uh, even uh, selling the gums. So we think that, okay, from where you are, which company are you coming from, uh, which group, what's the name, give us some uh, details about who's the, who's the buyer. He said, no, uh, this is my number. And he never left a business card. He left a piece of paper with his number. He no, said, this no. is my number. No, no, we have a name. Okay. He put I'll his name, he put his name, he put his number. He said, if you are interested, we are highly interested to acquire the brand name Digams. And he left this paper and leave. After we found out this Rabah Dinar or Nus Dinar missing, <laughs> we start laughing. Okay, what happens? Just somebody came in, he wants to buy digums. Is this you could have added that uh, Dinar to the yeah, is this is this true story? true what we Qais, did you see what I see? Or it's like a dream for me? He said, I don't know. It's my any uh, focus. Okay, let's sell the gums. Let's do it. Uh, and then uh, the selling came from here. We called him. We discussed. And then he's like a very uh, a gentleman. Uh, he uh, linked, up, linked us with uh, uh, Tawseel, where we meet Tawseel uh, owners. We meet, uh, they, they came from Al Watan. Okay. So, we so he wasn't from Tawseel, he was just like an agent. He, no, yeah. he, he was with one of company under Tawseel, okay. called Media something, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, and then uh, they got it. They got it. Uh, one thing I see a lot with the startups is um, they think about an exit strategy from the beginning. So they build the company thinking, we hope to get bought by um, Google, by Facebook, by Apple, whatever it may be. Uh, based or you didn't have that vision in mind. So we never thought to uh, sell the company. We, the, first time, the first day we operate digums.com back in February 2000 and 10, 25th of February, we operated Baid al Watani. And it was like Qais uh, Deshti's per day also. Oh. So we just do it like this. Let's launch it in your per day, Eid al Watani, and let's do it. So when we established Digums, the first thought is to make Digums.com a million dollar uh, product or a million dollar company. Never thought to sell it to anybody. And uh, I was uh, holding a very sentiment value, is someone here? And why can't Taban attach to it? And uh, we build it uh, from scratch. Uh, we do uh, a lot of job until uh, we reached uh, to our goal, yani, and it could uh, rental system with automated the deduction of a cost from the customer with the queuing and all this, uh, the system by itself, I mean. And was there a disagreement between you and Qais about the exit? Oh, is it based on too yeah. much, too much disagreement because uh, Qais has no sentiment value okay. toward Digams. Uh, Qais is a type of uh, guy who would like to explore. He uh, came up with an idea 
develop a system for it. It's even success or failure, he throw it out, develop another system. So he's like an ID generator, even uh, until yesterday. He's uh, thinking a new ID, talks to me in the phone, Ahmed, I found a brilliant ID. What's it? What is it? And he start talking to me about it. So he's like an idea generator, and uh, I am like an executor. I have sentiment value because I spend much more time. Um, see the I see the details. I see the codes. I uh, I do the A to Z work, while he do the operation work behind uh, behind the uh, I mean behind the system. Okay. Uh, what are the uh, key business lessons that you learned in your experience with Bezat and Tikkuns? Hey, you have to believe, okay, you have to listen to your partner, even if he is uh, wrong, listen to him. Uh, if he's the general manager and he's handling the steer, the Gadab Sikan, or Huwaqad Safina. Listen to what he said, because he might have an idea generated, still not for, not not clearly generated, and he want to execute it. And uh, for example, uh, for me, sometimes it's like I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I w I walk through his idea without even even if I saw no value in the idea, but I walk with him, and yes we found that he has something in his mind still needs to be polished. So we polished out. We came up with the right uh, idea at the right time. That's how, uh, the, the, that's the key, that's the first key. Okay. Uh, so uh, you, you may have like initial, an, an initial reaction to reject an idea, but you have to kind of give it some time to develop. Yes. Okay. The second thing, uh, now I have no sentiment value toward anything we develop because if you can develop it anybody can do it mm. Adil Ali <laughs> so guys if you want to buy out Bezat <laughs> there's a chance hurry up <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay uh, we hear a lot from uh, entrepreneurs that you can't have a uh, job and work at a business uh, you, ca you, ha you have to either choose a job or setting up your own, own business but your experience is different. Can you tell us what the arrangement was in building the games? Mm, well, okay, I can talk about my experience. My experience is uh, now I resigned. Okay. I, Only recently? Uh, recently, I resigned now. I'm free. I'm a free man. Freelance. Mm -hmm. So, if you are like Ra'il uh, Balin Chadab, if you are holding a, a job, and you want to establish your own company, it's like you have to, again, it uh, depends on the specialties. For me, I'm handling projects in Central Bank and I'm handling projects in Bezat. Okay. So I have to focus in one of the, uh, it's either to focus here or focus mm -hmm. there. So I decided to focus on my uh, my company uh, and it's for me it's a wise choice because uh, time spends here I can have the return in my pocket yes. not in somebody's pocket but but you managed to spend a few years juggling both yes right? yes I managed but it, uh, it's very tough because you have to wake up early in the morning go to your office then after that, you came back, you meet the, uh, your partner, your employee, and the other office, I mean your own company. Yes. You meet with them. After that, for me as an IT, my job started at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the evening. I start working until 2 3 o'clock in the morning. And then sleep this 3 hour or 4 hour, wake up late going to work late and have this kind of struggle until 
I finishes uh, my project or until I finishes the task I have been assigned to finish. That's the struggle I faced during my, uh, I mean, if I uh, answer your question. Yeah. When dealing with when both. Dealing with both. Okay. Uh, when you joined Digums, it seems like you joined it as though you were an, an intern. So there wasn't much of a risk for you to work there. Yeah. But then you became a partner. What was the mindset, the shift in mindset like? Did, were you concerned about whether this will succeed or not? Is it worth the investment or had it already established itself? Can you explain the question to me? Uh, initially, you were just an intern. You were getting paid 100 uh, KD right. just uh, to work there. So you saw it more of uh, a hobby. There wasn't much of a risk. You weren't mm -hmm. losing any money. Yeah. Uh, but when you became a partner and you took, you bought the 5%, mm -hmm. uh, was there a concern that this may be a failed business or did you have any no, doubts? No, not, uh, I never thought of uh, that, but uh, okay, if you, uh, if you see it uh, in the beginning, I was interned because Qais was not uh, uh, ready to have me on board yeah. on that time because he thought that uh, I'm not capable to handle that kind of work or uh, to do, uh, to work parallel, I mean, I have my morning shift yeah. in the government sector. I was in MBK and then I have uh, uh, evening shift with him. So he's like testing me in the first of uh, a couple of months or maybe around six months. And then when he see me capable to handle the, uh, uh, the project, uh, he, start, uh, خلاص, he start hiring my salary and say, okay, Ahmed, you can now buy and the company. So my decision was the time he offered me to buy in the company, I told, I told him, yes, I'm going to buy. I'm going to be the, I'm going to be part of a company. So it's like after become, after becoming a uh, stakeholder, the perspective has been changed. Yes, uh, risk, th there is a risk, but uh, from my, from me, uh, أنا أشوفها كنت الفلوس اللي قطيتها إني أدش أمتلك في الشركة. The money I spent to acquire that stake in the company it was like a push for me to be more uh, على قولتهم uh, committed. Uh, you have skin in the game. That, that yes. You have something to lose. Yes. So And that's how that's how I uh, look at it. Not from the risk perspective. From a commitment uh, perspective. Okay. Uh, and uh, are there were there any other internal struggles you experienced? Like um, maybe not doubts in the business itself. You were just afraid, or you had um, you were concerned about like the business side. Any other like? Mm, not really. Not really. Because it was it was like a fun in the beginning. After that, it's become like a challenge when you see uh, competitors came in. Okay. You feel like it's a bit more challenging to give. Uh, and I don't see a uh, struggle in that, no. Okay. Did you make any mistakes along the way that oh, you can admit? Yeah. Too much. Okay. Too much mistake. Yeah, mention it. Some, uh, sometimes we, we might develop some part in the system or think that the system has to work that way. We spend money and we spend time on it. And then after we uh, launch it or we put it on a production, we see nobody care about that function. Mm. So I see myself like why I'm spending all this time and money develop the uh, new or the, the new procedure for the, in the system while people will never thought to have, will never thought of it uh, even. And there is no feedback to, uh, okay, خليني أعطيك إياها as an example, uh, branding. I care about branding. So the emails sent to the customer, sometimes it's sent to the customer from the system that you have rent this game or you have uh, returned that game or you requested to uh, have this game uh, delivered to you. It's like an email. So I care about branding. I emphasize the, uh, my idea 
and enforce it to have it like a branding with the logo, with the design. Mm. So we spend much more time develop the emailing system for this uh, particular uh, uh, emails. And then after that, if you can see it, it's the same uh, concept. A customer, uh, even no response, a customer received the email telling him that you have uh, this games has to be delivered to you on that day. That's it. The branding and all this doesn't even uh, show uh, or uh, gives a benefit to uh, to or, or add it to to the uh, system. Yeah. So that's a mistake we make. Okay. Sometimes. Were there any a uh, products that you launched and then you had to pull out because? They failed or no? Mm, I don't remember. Ah, yes, there is. We uh, we uh, launch some uh, something called Hulu.com. Hulu.com. If you are, uh, if you have a homemade uh, bakery or you are in, خلينا نقول إيش يسمونها cupcakeers. يسمونهم cupcakeers ولا Huh? Cupcake company. Yeah. Cupcake company. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we established the same website for a cupcake uh, company. As a marketplace? like for, As a marketplace. For all, uh, As a marketplace. Okay. We established it. We polish it. We upload the uh, recipes and the price for the uh, product. And this site wasn't uh, even Mashaf oh. Noor. We never la launched it. When was this? In 2011. Okay. 2011. So before Instagram kicked out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Before Instagram kicked out, and uh, during the boom of cupcake uh, industries in Kuwait. Okay. Yeah. And why do you think it failed? Was it timing or the concept? Uh, the concept. The concept. We we are like a company. We have to have a bakery, or or uh, we have to. عندنا يكون مطبخ على اساس نشتغل وهذا اتس نوت ويذن اور سبيشالتيز ام ان اي تي قيس از اوبريشن جاي اوكي هوز جونا كوك ذا كيك هوز جونا دو ذا انجريدينز هوز جونا سو وي هاف تو جو ثرو بيكري اور مطبخ اور سو وي فيل ذات ذس از نوت اور سبيشالتيز ليتس موف اون لفينا السكان وطلعنا على السايت uh, and um, I'd like to talk more about the social support or the social response that you got from family and friends. When you said you were going to uh, join a company or be a, a partner in the business, how, how did your family take it? Were they supportive? Of course, of course. They were very supportive. And uh, family even, uh, even a friend. They were very supportive to go with the go and establish the company, or or for me to work in a small company like Digams in the beginning. And uh, everybody was looking to work with us, even oh. from our friend. It's like the Duani came to our office every day. Everybody in the office. So we met our friends every day in the office. That's how we see the supportive. And even family from a family, uh, my dad uh, always pushing me to work with uh, Qais, to be with Qais. Sometimes he told me, okay, uh, sometimes we fight with each other. Mm. My dad say, okay, this is your partner and your friend. Mm. Go and don't uh, break the uh, relation. Go with him. Say sorry if you are uh, if you are uh, mistaken. If he's mistaken, say sorry again to him. Mm. So uh, both way, my father support me to uh, work as an entrepreneur, to work in a small company, not to work as a corporate slave. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you have any any uh, individuals you see as your mentors? So if you want you want any career advice or uh, any yeah, guidance? Andy, Andy, fee. My brother uh, Ammar is a, my advisor. Okay. So he's uh, one year, one year, four months 
older than me, okay. but he's like uh, my advisor and uh, everything. Okay. So I get advice from him. He's a financial guy, but he's like um, uh, kind of a big, big, uh, big brother. We call it. Okay. Huh? Hey. Yeah. He's like a big brother, big mentor for me. I was going to ask how you met, but <laughs> he's your brother. <laughs> he lives down the hall. <laughs> I see him at breakfast. Yeah, yeah I see him at the breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, culture, can you give us like a glimpse of what it's like to work in Bezat? What are the working hours? Uh, oh, the team, oh. how big is your team to start off with? Well, uh, our team is like, we are 10 people. Mm. Uh, three head, let's say. Because three head means uh, head of operation, head of uh, IT, and head of product development. And we have our team, uh, it's like uh, marketing team just joined us, Shayma. Uh, she's with, uh, with us here. Uh, so everybody's handling specialties. So for example, I'm an IT, Qais is an operation, uh, Yusuf is the uh, product development and he do meetings, so many meetings. And uh, Shayma is a marketing and she's handling the PR and marketing. And we have like uh, uh, seven or six other employees with, with the deliveries, Mandoobs, uh, uh, Mandoobs, uh, What was the question again? The culture. In the culture. The culture is very friendly okay. culture. Okay. We never have a uh, punching finger, yeah. and we never thought of uh, having one. Uh, because you used to go late to work. I used to go late. Well, I work. I You're work. not going to impose No, no, I work remotely, by the way. Ah, OK. Yes. For me, it's like a remote. Uh, uh, I work from chalet. I work from home. Okay. I work uh, during my uh, travel. So uh, it's like an everyday. Uh, Hobbies, I do. Mm. I work every day, uh, at night, in the morning. Anytime I see myself, okay, it's time to open the laptop. So I open the laptop and start, I start working. But the other stuff, no, they are going through the, uh, because we have to maintain our customer. So we have like an operation guy, Qais, uh, Yusuf, is going through the meetings in the morning. Qais handling the operation afternoon, and uh, Shayma, uh, she just joined, so she's handling the PR and the uh, marketing, but even she's remotely. We never, we never met him, uh, met her in the office. <laughs> okay, you just met? Just no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, <laughs> should I introduce you to? <laughs> she's Shayma, by the way. Yeah. Are there? Uh, do you have any? company rituals, like a specific, let's say, breakfast meeting during the week or something? No, no. We have uh -huh. Duanie, Yom Khamis, tea Yom Khamis. Yep, I'm sorry. And then Duanie, we go together. Um, most of our يعني, partner, at least me, Qais, and Yusuf, uh, there we chit chat. But uh, uh, our environment, if we, if I want to go back to the environment, yeah. sometimes we st struggle on something. So we leave the office, we go to uh, a coffee shop, we sit together, or we go to a scientific center, we walk together, yeah. and we discuss how we can solve, or, or how we can, if we are in a struggle brainstorming with each other. So we go do another, uh, do other uh, tasks, or other uh, activities, than sitting in office. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have any like uh, important values for Bezat? Like uh, uh, certain values you you look for in employees, or that would represent the company? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first of all, we look at the chemistry between the team. So uh, we had so many. Kadamar uh, 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 we hired someone. He stayed for three months, and then we found that this guy is not helping. Uh, he's not even helping. This guy is try to enforce 
the the mindset uh, the, so uh, chemistry doesn't go with each other so we always decide not to uh, any push him away but he feel that he is not welcome okay so he start uh, he submit his resignation and leave uh, but yes uh, chemistry works with the team uh, team spirit uh, for example if you have uh, qanun and eight the 20, the 80. If you have 20% of your employee uh, pessimistic, you will fail, of course. So we avoid having this pessimistic member to, uh, in our uh, team. Okay, nice. Uh, in terms of uh, the growth of the company, do you look at it national or regional or global? Well, uh, yeah, the growth, okay, regional, uh, uh, global, I think it's quite difficult today. Okay. And global, we have uh, a competitor around the world. PayPal is a bigger uh, competitor, like we can say. Uh, and PayPal is trying to join the Gulf, uh, the GCC uh, region. But yes, uh, our expansion is, we are looking to expand regionally. Uh, they have the same mentality we had. I mean, uh, the product can can works uh, in the regional uh, better within than culture, yes yeah. within the same culture better than uh, global. Global still we never thought of it. Okay, and who are your regional competitors? Well, regional competitor in Kuwait we have they call them. Our competitor in Kuwait, we have Next Payment okay. is a mobile uh, mobile wallet, and uh, Tab is a mobile uh, e-commerce, or they call it M-commerce. Okay. Uh, they have, يعني, أنا, I can see it, it. They are very different than us yes. as a billing system. I'm talking about Tajer.com. Yeah. Tajer is a billing system. They are like mobile wallet and e-commerce site with a multi-vendor, so it's different, but people are comparing uh, them with us. In the region, I, no, I never uh, see a competitor uh, providing a billing system with a payment gateway. Uh, well, you have a billing system uh, uh, globally. It's like a Wave, I guess, some of uh, accounting system, they call it wave.com or uh, uh, some system that works with Shopify or Shopify, uh, yeah. Shopify, something like it works with it, but I don't remember the name now. Uh, they are billing system, okay. but they don't have a, a local payment gateway. That's okay. how we difference than, uh, them. Okay. And uh, where do you see Bezat in the future? What direction would you like? Well, I think, I think Bezat is uh, going toward uh, collection, um, various collection, the um, uh, not collection agency, but uh, uh, to be a collection um, company. And uh, a collection of different products? Different products, like a jarat, rental, collecting rent, collecting. Uh, now we have some customer, they are testing uh, our uh, systems. It's like Mazaya, we have Mazaya with us. We have uh, Mazaya is a real estate company. Yeah. We have uh, CFC is a financial company. So we are testing uh, each company in a, in a sector. We have Mazaya, yeah. uh, CFC, and uh, IFC Arzan, they call it uh, Arzan. They are collecting for finance. We have uh, uh, Fastelico, they are collecting for service. Mm -hmm. So we are testing it and we found, uh, we found a market and all this. So I think uh, Tajer or Bezat uh, uh, with Tajer.com, uh, we might be a collection age, a big collection agency that collect money for a customer in a various uh, product sectors. Okay. Sectors. Very nice. Thank you very much. Welcome. I'll uh, hand it over to the audience if you have any questions. Can you elaborate more on the difference between Taja and Next Payments and Tap? Because you said that uh, you differentiate yourself from these competitors. 
No, they are they are different uh, people. Uh, people when they uh, see us as a as a payment gateway, they saw us. It's like uh, they came to us. They say, okay, Tab can give you uh, ability to collect money, but Tab is an e-commerce site. You have to e-commerce, mobile okay. commerce. Okay. Uh, mobile commerce. Okay. You have to upload your products, then have your products. Uh, price set and then a customer has to go in try to buy in check out using tab payment gateway uh, for example next next is a mobile wallet you have to feed a next account with your with a balance using knit or I think uh, they have knit using knit they feed the account they tap up their account with the money and then they go out with the mobile only without his wallet. So he go to, for example, Starbucks, he paid using his mobile. Mm -hmm. So it's a mobile wallet. Our system is not uh, M-commerce either, uh, not uh, mobile wallet. We are a billing system that uh, has a fast uh, collection process. Within two click, you can, you might, I might collect money from anyone. Rental, for example. Rental. How does the rental process work? Rental process. Uh, rental company, they issue their uh, uh, rental amount or their uh, invoices. They upload it to Tajer. Tajer get executed these patches, send one by one to uh, their uh, tenants. And then tenants will receive SMS and email at the same time. Uh, there is a link. They follow the link. It takes you to the invoice or the 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 uh, amount they should pay, and then they go through the Knet or Visa or Master and pay it direct debit from their account. <coughs> so no need a mobile wallet, feed up the account, and then take it to the next step. And you're not limited to mobile. Not okay, limited to mobile. Yes, stuff, not limited. Okay. But we are mobile friendly. Yeah, I just want to follow up on his question that uh, after the, for example, now the, in the rental, now the, 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 the landlord is the one who's requesting the payment, right? Yes. If I'm the user, I have already, uh, can I have my, my account uh, already established in your system where my, it's already linked to my credit card or my... Uh, not linked to your credit card. Okay, the process is we, ha we hold the, uh, uh, the amount in our account. And then we initiate a transfer upon um, a customer request. For example, Mazaya, after collecting the money, Mazaya accounts within Tajer, they start receiving money. So they collect, for example, 1,000, 2,000 KD. After that, uh, in the end of the day, they request for withdrawal. We transfer this amount to Mazaya. That's how the uh, the link. It's not okay. linked to but your account. Uh, he meant can uh, you mean uh, direct debit, as in a, a I transfer. Direct debit. So when I receive the SMS that pay your rent, I can just say okay and. No pay. way, no way, Ali, because because uh, it's against the PCI compliance. That's number one. PCI compliance. We cannot hold your uh, credit card or Knet information within our system. Uh, we have to be very much secured to handle uh, this and we regret to have a credit card or Knet information stored in our uh, system. But PayPal, for example, yeah. does store data. Like you can you know, save your data, yeah. you can log in, you your username and password. So that they, they can do that. Why can't you? We are different. We, uh, our difference is this. Yes, uh, we thought of. Okay, just to link your question with uh, Mr. Ali questions, we thought of having this uh, capability in our system, but it has it has to be uh, done through a lot of uh, uh, checks and a lot of due diligence before we store the data. Because, for example. Uh, if you are, if you want to store your credit card within our com within our uh, uh, system, then I have to first create account for a pair, and that's we avoid to have. 
we just have the account for a, uh, let's say, the, the merchant, not the payer. So uh, our system is a different. We are, we are B2B with our customer, and the customer can collect money from you directly from the bank. But, uh, yeah. So you mean uh, technically it can be done, but it's not w uh, the direction they want to head in. Every single time. Every single time. It's how the local market Yes. 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 It has to be like this, and you cannot store Kenet data. Kenet data, but yes. Credit cards in Kuwait. Sorry, I'm taking this too long. But the Visa cards are also verified by Visa, and verified by Visa does have its own system as well. Would that be possible to work with the angle instead of Kenet? Can you can you avoid Kenet? Yeah, but we never thought of we never thought of uh, having uh, this uh, because it's very hectic to to have a, that much of security uh, on this part. It's very it's very. Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Yeah, no, thank you for the question. But it's very hectic to store payer data. You know, it's bec it's because uh, we are not PayPal. We are Tajer.com, and Tajer.com works as a billing system for the merchant, not for the payer. We never thought to have a payer. But in the future, uh, back to your question, in the future we might be like uh, uh, if we acquire or we expand, there is a thought to be a virtual bank where we have the payer. Each payer have his own balance, his own accounts linked to his bank. And we became like a virtual bank across the uh, GCC, where you can pay, uh, for example, company in Dubai from Kuwait through Tajer. But this has to go through so much paper uh, uh, operationally, and you have to acquire a bank, a bank uh, uh, license. Like mixing waves with PayPal and putting it together. Yes. Well, now, now there are three. Okay. <laughs> they, can, they can increase by the minute. The first question is, I'll leave the hardest to the last. The first one has to do with the business environment in which you work. And you mentioned that everybody works remotely. Does that affect the productivity of the team members? Because I think sometimes, like let's say working from home can be a disadvantage. To me at least, I think sometimes it works for me. Sometimes it doesn't. Because the environment sort of does not support the mentality of being productive. So do you ever feel, although you do have an office for the company, right? Mm -hmm. do you feel as though that this would affect the productivity of the team members to have that luxury, which is good, but sort of put a limit on it? Well, uh, for me, I see, I see uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, it's different. Uh, I see it different than the uh, team member in the office. For me, I see it a luxury to have it open, uh, no time uh, constraint, and I can work in the office and in the home. And the productivity came when it's like uh, sometimes you feel you want to work now. It's 12 midnight, you feel yourself I want to do something now. So you go and open the computer. For me as an IT, I can see a, a, a value and it's, I'll be more productive to have a virtual uh, office than to be stayed in the office. But for other team member, uh, they have to be in the office during the working hour. So. Uh, Depends on what you do. Yes. Depends on what you do. Yes. I answered your question? Yeah, that, that answers my second uh -huh. question. 
Second question. Since you went first through an acquisition of the first idea, which was Digos, mm -hmm. and now you started another one or a couple, a couple, a couple other ideas. I think if I were to be in your shoes, I'd have that scenario be played in my head the whole time as I start a new idea, because now that you started another venture, would you have that scenario be played in your head, meaning that would you sell sell, sell out? The other products. Is, is that would that be the the, the final the final um, goal goal for mm. you? Uh, well, as a matter, oh, and I mean, no matter how hard you try, you still have that A B. Of course, of course, after of course after the first acquisition of after first selling of digums dot com, uh, we see a value to. Uh, we see a value to go through establishment and we have the, this thought in our minds to sell our uh, achievement. But uh, at the same time, uh, when we established a company, we always thought of uh, established a lean startup. Uh, we don't go full-fledged like uh, I have an idea in my mind today. So. I usually start hits the uh, hit the developed an ID with a very minimum of uh, amount and tested get tested in the market after I build up a company on it. So to answer your question, um, uh, is it in back of my mind when I establish the other three product within Digam's company, which is Deram? fruit and digums store, yes, I have this mind in every uh, single minute to sell them out. But uh, at the same time, when I establish these products and I tested them in the market, I, fee I, I see a value came, coming from. So it's either to sell it out or to keep it in your company, it's benefiting. So uh, like, I, like what I say, and Hulu.com. Hulu.com is the cupcake company. We never even launch it because we see no uh, value to have it. Okay, your third question. Or did they go back? Go down to two. Uh, third question. The, thir the third question is: uh, Would it would it be available for Tajir? Would it be available for like let's say as a product for online stores to facilitate and sort of. Again, As an, uh, online payment, yeah. payment for online stores. As a payment gateway. Mm, we test. We are testing this uh, function to be uh, like a payment gateway for a, for an online store, and we uh, have uh, we have established uh, small uh, lean startup uh, product called Crude Merchant. And uh, we are testing now the ability to have Tajer as a payment gateway for an online store. Yes. We are going through this direction. We are, we are testing uh, all the directions, you know. Uh, well, yes. Uh, we, as a service provider, we have our Knet uh, gateway under our company, and uh, when we go and do a contract with the business to business, why I mentioned B two B, because I go to business. I don't open for a, a non uh, or let's say someone whom home businesses. Home businesses, I, yeah, home business, not registered uh, company, uh, doesn't allow in our uh, system. So we go to big company, and when we do contracting with them, we do a tie-up relationship. So it's like uh, the company and us signing a contract that they are using our payment gateway to collect the money uh, from the customer. So from here we can avoid, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, يعني risk of having a Knet uh, 
ما يبي يعني انه ما عندنا مشكله مع كينت في هال في هالحيثيه هذه لان احنا نسوي تاي اب ريليشن شيب وذ ذا وذ ذا كمباني سو وي بيكم لايك ذا بيلينج سيستم فور ذا كمباني يا اند هايرينج بروسيس هاو دو يو هاير نيو امبلويز هايرينج بروسيس وي هاف طبعا اوكي اي وونت تو اناونس ذس وي هاف ان انترن شيب بروجرام we used to have uh, employee came to our office saying okay i want to work with you a talented um, employee came to us i want to work with you we gave him like a three month uh, with a small amount of salary and then we hire him for another three month test him test uh, the, the chemistry with the team and uh, hiring process is like uh, it's done very friendly ba- base We don't have a big HR uh, agent or big HR, HR manager that has an interview the guy and have all this. No, we uh, we always look for the uh, uh, talented that ha- that add value even without uh, an experience. We don't look for an experience uh, people. For example, I don't look for someone has like. 15 years in IT, I might get somebody's uh, having experience one year, can work and can give better than uh, this five, 15 years experienced guy. Okay, but do you use, usually uh, search for talents or do they come mm, to you? No, uh, usually we, usually they came to us. Okay. They see Tajer sometimes and they contacted us Okay, what is this? I would like to work, and we have our vacancies uh, uh, tab in our website. Sometimes we post some vacancies if we are in, in need urgently for a, uh, an employee. But for now, we are only open for the internship. And uh, any specific internship? Is it technical or uh, IT, business, operation? And uh, what else? Marketing, we already fulfilled. We are testing the chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when you launch a project, I just want to know, usually how many developers or how many team members do you have within that team to, to be able to launch it? Okay. Project? We do, in our office, we do the business analyst job. We sit together. We brainstorm, we document all these processes, uh, functions we'd like to have. And then they hand it over to me. I polish it out. I start hiring a, we used to hire an outsource developer, but after now three or four years of experience, like now I have Uh, company I used to uh, deal with and uh, have uh, freelance developers I used to deal with and I have developed with them two or three times so uh, it's like I have my own team ready I can contact them and I know by expertise for example if I have a product that needs uh, design and developed I have my designer it's from Philippine I have my developer It depends on how the quality I want. I want something with, oh, Indian, Indian, by the way, is, they have good quality, but sometimes I go to Ukraine. I have uh, developers in Ukraine. So I go to Ukraine, but it has a higher price if I want things to be done very quick. Is this, is this a, as a whole team, or are you talking about as... Uh, no, I work, I work um, our office works like a uh, project manager. I work as a project manager. So I'm the only team member here in Kuwait. And I have my developers, project manager from the uh, outsource, and developers from outsource. I have <coughs> Q&A, I have testers, and it's all uh, outsourced. How large are the teams that you do? 
in Tajer, I work with uh, three developers, one project manager beside me, so two project manager, three developer, and uh, one QA, one uh, tester. And, and you use, for example, a certain process like Scrum, or would you? Well, uh, it depends on, it depends on, okay, because it's like, uh, while we developed, we do the, B, the BA uh, job in the office. So uh, we don't have like a project uh, plan uh, for, the, for, the, uh, uh, for our project, but we do have a start date, an end date, a sta uh, established date, let's say uh, move to production date. And we used some of uh, yani Tajer, we developed it and uh, I, never, I never went through this kind of development. We have like development stage, uh, we have uh, uh, something called staging environment and then we have a production environment. And in Tajer, we do have development where we have all these testing uh, function and development stage and then when we polish it out, we take it to the uh, staging environment. And the staging environment, me as a project manager, I work as a tester. So I test the testing uh, team uh, in Ukraine test. And then after we, let's say, be in the same uh, uh, confirmation, OK, I confirm that the function is work fine. He confirmed that the function works fine. We move it to production. So uh, I think the structure is there, but uh, not a project management. Uh, we don't follow a project management uh, uh, method. method. So last question. Yes. Um, what happens when, for example, you work in developers and you're working down the line and you realize that you don't like these developers or they're either too costly, you can no longer continue with them. Can you transfer it using your current methods? Yes. Yes, because we used in Tajer, as I told you, we uh, try to minimize the the risk of changing the developer. So we use the bit uh, bit bucket. They call it bit bucket uh, system for the code management and uh, uh, versioning control. So any developer, even from the same company I work with. They change the developers, and I keep a track on my codes in the bit bucket. And anything happens, I can go back and see what's happened because I'm a coder, so I can go and see where is the if there is like uh, a new developer came and there is bugs in his new way of doing things, you know, because it's like a tailor. Everybody thinks in a different uh, mood, so I stopped him. I start teaching him, giving him background how the system works, and I take him to uh, to the level that I can now depend on that developer to do the job. That's how I can control uh, the various uh, capabilities of a developers. Excellent. Uh, final question, Mustafa. Okay. Do you okay. Call, you have two questions and perm. Questions seem to give breath in this place. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my first question is that for your outsourced uh, developers, for you, uh, in what base, basis you hire them? Hourly based or it's piece by piece or by project? Uh, okay. Uh, in all my previous development, it was hourly basis. Um, some of them was like if, if there is a model, he would like to build it for e-commerce site. It's like a project base, yeah. but in Tajer, we go through the uh, hiring uh, developer. So I have my team. I know them by name. I know their uh, telephone number, and they are dedica fully dedicated to me. If I, did, if I did not give them task to work, they, were, they will be sleeping. They will be happy there, sleeping, nothing to do. And get paid. Get paid. So they are like full-time, full -time, but outsourced? Full-time, outsourced, with me 24-7. Yeah, the project manager, the project manager, he's like, uh, 
I wake up 2 o'clock in the morning, I text him, come online. So he came, I start discussing things with him, start brainstorm, a new ID, a new function, and then I start documenting that and send it to his developer in the morning. My, my second question is that, you almost answered the question, how, re how reliable you find this when you, uh, when you determine your date? So I go through this sometimes, but I didn't launch on that date. Anyway. Perfect. Uh, everybody is looking for a, for a, everybody has a price tag. Yes. Okay. Then uh, you can have your developers reliable if you are committed to pay the amount uh, they are putting. Because sometimes uh, when you work with uh, freelance, in Odisk or the other freelance uh, yeah, Elance uh, systems, I used Odisk always. Okay. Elance, I never used, I never use it. But in Odisk, when you go to some developer, sometimes you feel that he's like taking so much time yes. because they want to, I go to him very straight. Tell me how much you want for this job to be done this job, because I'm a coder, I know this job needs uh, seven days to work. I gave him 10 days paid. Uh -huh. So I calculated the amount with him before I start. This is, this is for per task, but hourly rate, you know, it's, sometimes he's hourly, busy, I, but he's not I don't recommend hourly. I, me, myself, I don't recommend hourly time because sometimes you will, you will be uh, busy, you will be like uh, busy with something and the, your developer still working with what? You are coder, you know that this amount, th this much of th this uh, uh, task doesn't need that much of hours. For example, if you, are, if you want to change, give a simple example, banner. Banner needs maybe to change it from one technology to other. It needs uh, codes to be written and tested and to be seen in different platform, responsive designer. It needs one hour. If he spends five hour and he's still telling you that, oh, I have half an hour to be finished, then you feel that because you are busy. That's, that's my recommendation. I don't recommend uh, hourly basis. Okay. Yeah. Prem, final question. You have two questions or just one? Okay. Let's say I'm using QuickBooks uh, for my accounting. And will your invoicing, you know, getting my accounting system so I don't have to maintain two things? Yes. You have your accounting system? Yes. We have something called the API integration. It's ready made with us and tested with uh, Arzan. Uh, any payment get paid uh, for Arzan customer, it directly hit Arzan uh, financial account and uh, reflects the amount. So, quick post, quick box. Okay, QuickBooks, I have to, I have to see, I have to, okay, we have an API. This API can initiate an invoice for you and can have the callback URL with the post message back to your system after any paid or trial uh, transaction. I think from your side, you can integrate this very easy. So you integrate with QuickBooks? Yes. Okay. With Tajer. We can take this offline. I can uh, show you. Yes, it's very easy uh, integration process you need. From your side, it's very easy integration process. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any final thoughts? Any piece of advice you'd like to leave the audience with? Well, I have one advice for an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, if you have an idea in your mind, don't keep it for yourself. Open up, speak with your friend, talk, talk about it with your uh, 
uh, I mean, if you are in Sardab Lab, now talk to, talk to them. Talk to the colleagues in Sardab Lab. Uh, you will find the benefit of having uh, your idea polished by telling uh, the people about it. They might add things uh, that could be uh, for forgotten for in uh, your ID. So your ID would be polished and would be, uh, I mean, and it had been improved uh, for a future or for your development, for your uh, development. Uh, other advice is uh, don't ever think that if you tell your uh, uh, idea to your friend or your colleague, they will do it because uh, they will never do anything until they do it. Yeah. So an idea can be shared very freely and we always share ID. For example, in our office, even if our friend came, we talk about our ideas and we talk about, we brainstorm so, so much with them. Tajer was like a brainstorm uh, several times with several teams and uh, everyone we uh, talk, uh, talk to him about Tajer, he said, oh, that's a, that's a brilliant idea. I was thought of it to build it. Now, after one year and a half, Tajer is online now and the people we are spoke with, they never, they just thought of, uh, thought of it. Well, that's my uh, advice to everybody. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. And Welcome. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. And thanks, thanks for Serdab Lab to uh, give us the opportunity to come and speak.